In this video, I'm cutting plywood, getting familiar with 3D printing, and once again working with beautiful black oak veneer to make a small sound machine slash audio player based on a Raspberry Pi Zero W and a tiny Hi-Fi Berry amp. The software side of things is managed by Volumio, and you can interact with it either through a 4-inch WaveShare Touch display, Volumio's web interface, or a dedicated mobile app. I made this for someone very special, my newborn son. By far the most ambitious long-term DIY project I've taken on, who also happens to be the reason why I haven't been able to upload videos for a while. Without further ado, let's go over the design and components I've chosen for this project. The cube measures a little under 15cm along the edge. It's made from 10mm thick plywood and it's covered with a black old veneer, the very same I used when making a jukebox a while ago since I wanted to have a somewhat matching set. Two coaxial speakers, rated for 10 watts each, are powered by Hi-Fi Berry Mini Amp. It puts out only 3 watts per channel, which is just enough, but the best thing about it is that it doesn't need an external power supply. The screen is the original WaveShare 4-inch IPS display, not a cheap knockoff that will break rather sooner than later. It's 800 by 480 pixels, and it connects through HDMI to send video signal and GPIO for touch input and power delivery. Since I have two components connecting through the GPIO, I used an extension board allowing me to connect both. Before I did that, I checked which GPIO pins are used by the mini amp and the WaveShare display, making sure there will be no conflicts. I started from cutting the plywood. Using a power miter saw with the baby in the very next room was out of the question, so I used a hand-operated angle miter. If you know how this is called, feel free to educate me in the comment section down below. After cutting three pieces at 45 degrees for the top, the bottom and the right side, I cut the left and the front parts where the speakers go. I cut openings for speakers using a hole saw. Next, I drilled pilot holes in the top panel and cut opening for the LCD display. I wanted for the display to be almost flush with the surface. Initially, I was going to cut the opening a little smaller and use a router to take out some material and make room for the PCB. But since I have to limit the usage of power tools, I decided to 3D print and insert for the LCD screen. Modeling parts for 3D printing is something a little different from what I'm used to as it requires much more precision. I printed the insert in PLA on the Creality Ender 3 printer that was sent to me by my good friends over at Banggood. I ditched the first print due to a minor design flow that I tried to address with a Dremel. After a few modifications, I sent it to the printer once again. It still didn't come out perfect, but good enough, so I fixed the insert in place and put some fiber filler in all cracks. I sanded the box thoroughly, preparing it for applying veneer. I spread a layer of contact glue on both surfaces, waited 10 minutes and put the two together. I cut the excess of veneer using a utility knife, carefully sanded the edges and repeated the drill with the two remaining surfaces. Next, I printed the front cover that's actually split in two parts. It took approximately 6 hours each to print and since I'm still learning, I did experience some warping on the first piece that I tried to fix by hitting it up and forming to a desired shape. Printing the other piece with a brim seemed to limit the warping. Initially, I wanted to attach the front on a set of posts, but eventually I ditched that idea as these posts turned out to be too fragile. I glued both parts together and cut fabric that I bought for my previous jukebox. I fixed the cloth using a special fabric glue and trimmed the excess of the material. To attach the speaker's cover, I 3D printed a few standoffs that I screwed into the plywood. Next, I designed a frame for the Pi Zero, the GPIO extender and the Hi-Fi Berry Mini Amp. Once it was ready, I started the assembly, which due to very confined space wasn't exactly a walk in the park. The LCD screen went in first, fixed by a set of wood screws. Next, I attached the frame and screwed in the Pi Zero with the GPIO extender and the mini amp and connected the touch display wires to the GPIO pins. Then, I fixed the speakers in place. It was really tight inside, with the magnet's clearance measured in tenths of a millimeter. Finally, I attached a set of rubber feet, applied some wax onto the veneer and attach the front cover using as little glue as possible so I can take the cover off and disassemble everything if need be. With the hardware part more or less complete, I moved on to installing software. For my audio projects, I always go with Volumio, which is free and has a few useful features such as touch display support. 
I download the installation image file and use Win32 Disk Imager to write it onto a mini SD card. I popped the card into the Pi Zero and powered it on. After the Pi booted up, I connected my smartphone to the Wi-Fi network broadcasted by Volumio and went through the initial setup. When doing that, make sure to select the i2s audio output and choose Hi-Fi Barrett DAC as the playback device. Once the Pi connected to my Wi-Fi network, I enter playback options and enable the software volume control. Next, I install the Touch Display plugin. For some reason, it froze at 70% but claimed that the plugin installed successfully. The 5-inch display would have worked out of the box, but the 4-inch version needs some tweaking as it defaults to portrait mode. First, you would want to enable SSH access. To do that, direct your browser to your Volumio instance slash dev and click enable in the SSH access section. Connect to your Pi using PuTTY or your SSH client of choice. Login using default login credentials. Go to the boot folder and edit the config file. I'll have this part covered in the description or on a website for your convenience. One more thing left to do was calibrating the touch interface as after installation the X and Y axis were inverted. A few Linux spells and a quick config file edit later, everything was in order. Some mandatory constructive criticism. The LCD cutout is a bit off. This is due to the fact that the display was supposed to be oriented differently, but during the assembly it turned out that the HDMI display cable wasn't long enough to connect the screen to the Pi and it had to be rotated. So far, my 3D prints leave a lot to be desired, especially when it comes to strength of 3D printed parts, but I do like the concept a lot. You can fabricate complex parts without power tools and other implications such as noise and mess involved. I'm working on my Ender 3 review, so stay tuned if you're not sick of those. The front cover would actually look better if it was flush with the box, and I consider redoing it sometime in the future. I also have to design and print the back cover so the cat doesn't reach in and pull out all the wires. He loves those. The last thing on improvements list is changing the style sheet to make buttons larger and easier to interact. Well, this is it for now. Once again, sorry for not publishing for so long. Hope you understand that family comes first and that little guy didn't have the easiest start into his life. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.